recording, guys. Oh, there you go. And we're recording. <laughs> Thanks, Victor. Thank you. We want to clap everyone. on the recording. <laughs> <laughs> That's my first clap. I've never done a clap before, so I was like, you did great, Ashley. <laughs> you did so good. You did so good. Way better than I would have done. <laughs> Awesome, everyone. Welcome. Paula and I are so, so grateful you're here today. If you're not muted, could you please mute yourself just so we don't have extra background noise? Beautiful. So as I said before, there's going to be a few of you on here that I don't know about access consciousness or don't do much about it. So my name is Ashley Rose. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an access consciousness certified facilitator, as is my beautiful friend, Paula Peralta. So access consciousness, for lack of a better word, is a modality, I guess, that gives you the tools, the questions, the processes to basically change anything in your life. And I really mean anything. 18 months ago, I was really depressed, really anxious and all of that jazz, which doesn't even matter now. But these tools have truly changed my life. And I'm here to introduce you guys to them as well and really get them out in the world because I just know how many lives have been changed with these really pragmatic tools. So Paula and I wanted to do a free call just to introduce you guys to it and speak about turning it up. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Thanks, Ashley. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us and playing with us. And Oh, I hear Diana. I love it. Cool. So really, um, the question that we have for you guys today is what if you didn't have to turn it down, turn it off for anybody, like in, like for anybody, for anything, like what if you could constantly be turning it up, um, and out creating yourself and out creating all of the things that have like brought you up to this point right now. <clears throat> and we are in such an interesting time right now, um, in that like really, what we have is an opportunity to push reset in all of the areas where maybe we're not turning it up or um, maybe we are turning it up and we could turn it up even a little bit more. So it's like really, as we continue, as we go through this conversation, it's like, this is an opportunity and an invitation and thank you for choosing to look at the places where you are turning it up, where you are showing up, where you are creating and and showing up as who you desire to show up as and also look at the places where you can get really vulnerable with yourself and look at where like what else is possible what else can you choose like what are you aware like what are those little niggling things in the back of your mind where it's like wow i want to do this and i have all the reasons justifications why i can't do it one of them being time right is like more often the reason that we have for not so it's like what's there now like what can you look at now what can you get super present and vulnerable with right now that could actually catapult you that would be the leaping point that would be the jumping off point into the next possibility um so this really this this call as we go through it's like we're here for you and like ashley said we're we are facilitators and we would love to help facilitate you in turning it up and also um like we're not going to push you past where you desire to go so we love to play with you and i um I love to turn it up personally um, and would love to invite you guys to do the same as well if that's fun for you. So yeah, girl, what you got? Awesome. So guys, over this call as well, if you guys have any questions, please just unmute yourself. Like Paula said, we're here for you. We're just going to follow the energy of where you guys want to go. So if there's anything you could get out of this call, it's like, please let us know as well. So as Paula said, right now in the world is very interesting times with the coronavirus and everything that's going on. There's so much shifting and changing, as you guys will be aware of. And a bit of a truth bomb, there's no going back from here. Like, I really get a sense that planet Earth is really asking us to step up. Like, really step into everything we've actually came here to be. So, for those of you who aren't aware, we are this wonderful infinite being. Like, the you is an infinite being. You are capable of anything. You have infinite possibilities available to you. But what we do is we try and fit ourselves, like and make ourselves the size of our body and make our choices based on the limited choice that this reality tells us is actually available to us. So the limited time, the limited money, the limited possibilities. And we seem to create our lives from what we see that other people have created. And 
most of us aren't willing to actually go beyond and out create our family, our friends and other access consciousness facilitators as well. So it's like, what if now's the time to actually do that? What if now's the time to step into everything you came here to be? So everything that doesn't allow that times like a zillion, let's destroy and uncreate it all. Right, wrong, good, right, bad, wrong, good, bad, part, part, all nine choice, boys, be honest. <laughs> but you can be my official part and part. Perfect. I will hot talk you for the rest of my life. So for those of you who don't know what that weird statement was, that's the access consciousness clearing statement. So that clearing statement clears the energies, the limitations, the points of view, and the judgments you have that are stopping you going from beyond that. So our point of view creates our reality or our beliefs create our reality. Our reality does not create our point of view. So it's actually just the points of view you have that are stopping you from out creating everyone and turning it up turning up your capacities, turning up the ease, turning up the joy that is actually your birthright. It's actually your natural state of being. But what we do is in this reality, we are so psychic without anyone tell us. And we pick up on all the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions of everyone else, the points of view, the beliefs of everyone else. And we think that it must be ours. And then we end up creating our life from that. So everywhere you're creating your life from the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions, the fixed points of view of everyone else, you're now destroying and created all times a gazillion. Right and wrong, good and bad, pocked and pod, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And um, if we could just for one second, <clears throat> thank you so much for Ashley, Ashley for that and opening that door. If you guys for just one second could actually get super present in your bodies, we're going to do a little, a little exercise to get to you, okay? So go ahead, wherever you're at on your bed, if you're laying on your bed or if you're sitting on the ground, feel your feet on the floor, feel your butt on the seat, your back against the seat, whatever that looks like, your bed, your body against the bed. And just get actually super present with your body. And sometimes like I'll touch my body. So I've got a hand on my tummy. You can't really see it right now. You can touch your face if that's like, if that works for you. Close your eyes if you'd like. And just say hello to your body. Hey body. Thanks for being you, body. Cool. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to actually perceive you like and expand yourself to the edges of all of your skin. So yes, you're physically touching your body and also ask your being to expand out. Even if you don't know, quote unquote, what that looks like, just ask it to happen and it will. And then what I'd love for you to do is expand out actually to fill the entire room. So imagine like top, bottom, left, right, front, back, expand into every corner. So you, the being, expanding out into every corner of the room that you're in. And then the building, the city block, if that works for you, the city, the state, the county, the province, wherever you are. And then imagine yourself going 100,000 miles in every direction. So down into the earth, up into the sky, into the universe, left to the right, to the front, to the back. Almost like you're giving every molecule within that 100,000 mile radius a big hug. You're just saying hello. You can give it a high five if you're not a hugger. That's fine too. So you're engaging your being, engaging your being with all of those molecules. Okay, and then almost like a sonic boom, I want you to expand out as far as far as you can even really perceive and then a little further than that or a lot further if you're an overachiever that's fine too so expand out so even if you're like well paula i don't know where the edges of the universe are that's okay just ask your being to expand out more and then lower your walls and barriers. So anywhere that you're like, I can't do this. This is crazy. What did I sign up for? I know this is free, but I don't know about this. Okay, so lower all those walls and barriers there and expand out. And turn it up even more. So all those spaces and places, those like some days, the like just out of reaches, expand out way past those. Cool. And then open your eyes. Hi. 
So you guys, that is, that's the space of you. So when we talk about you, the being, and Ashley mentioned like we, you, the being, like your body is in you and you are also an infinite being. It's like from that space, what's actually possible? And I like be, I, I like to say like from that space, like what is impossible? So it's like, what have you decided is impossible that if you would actually show up as all of you is not only a possibility, but is a platform that allows you to leap into even something even greater than you can imagine. So everything that doesn't allow you to know, be perceived and receive that, will you destroy and uncreate it? Right now, I'm good and bad, pun, poc, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyond. Do we yeah. have any questions? As we said, I'll meet you self at any time, guys. So yeah. do you notice that sense of space? Do you notice that maybe before we actually did that exercise, you may have been a little bit contracted. You may have felt a little bit heavy. You may have had some thoughts in your head. Do you notice how that's kind of like disappeared? That's actually you. That's the being of you. And how many times do you tell yourself that you are your thoughts, your feelings, and your emotions? You're not. You are infinite space, infinite joy, infinite ease, and infinite possibility. And unfortunately, the only thing that stops you from turning it up is you. But how many times do we actually stop ourselves from turning it up in the face of judgment? How many times do we let other people's judgments of us, other people's judgments of what we're doing, what we're not doing, what we're choosing, what we're not choosing, how many times do we let that totally limit us it contracts our very being. And then we just get this sense of, I don't even know what to choose anymore. But you know, you've always known. So all the judgments you're using to limit you, we destroy and uncreate at all times, a gazillion. Right and wrong, good and bad, pocket pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And that's the thing. It's like, you really got to get that judgment is not real or true. Judgment is just, just a lie. Judgment has nothing to do with us and everything to do with the other person actually judging us. So how many times have you actually made judgment real and true? You've solidified that judgment in your body and stopped you from choosing something greater and choosing what you actually know is possible. So everything all of that is and everything that brings up and every way you're using that to limit your choices will you destroy and uncreate at all times a gazillion. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pod, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And then everywhere you guys have contracted with that question, everywhere you perceive the judgments and you actually bought them as real. So whether they're judgments that other people have thrust at you, um, they're judgments that you have thrust upon yourself. Will you expand out? Cool. And the thing about judgment for me, and this is something that I've been looking at and really like playing with dynamically is that so Ashley said judgment is a lie. And what I know about judgment is that in the space of gratitude, judgment cannot exist. So where can you actually choose gratitude for you? That if you would choose it, it would actually get you out of the wrongness and allow you to perceive the lie that judgment actually is. So everything that doesn't allow that, we just train and create it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pod, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And this is the thing with judgment. We make it so real and true and we solidify it in our body. And that literally becomes so dense that, I mean, how many of you have not been able to go past that or look beyond that or actually find you in the space of judgment? So a really cool exercise, which we've just done, is in the face of judgment, what if you just expanded your energy out and actually lowered your walls and barriers? So I'm just going to get you guys just one more time just to close your eyes. Get really present again with the bed or the seat under you. Again, reaching to the outside edges of the universe as we've done. And just slowly imagining those walls and barriers you've erected around you 
those walls and barriers you've erected to stop judgment from affecting you, can you start pushing those down, please? Just visualize pushing them down from the head, past the neck, the shoulders, the chest, the tummy, the hips, all the way down to the ground. Awesome, thank you guys. So when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Again, do you notice a newfound sense of space again? So here's what to do in the face of judgment. When you're judging you, when someone's judging you, when you get aware that you're letting that stop you, just take a moment to push down your walls and barriers. Because here's the thing, judgment's actually just an energy. Our bodies love energy. What if instead of resisting and reacting to the judgment that you're using to stop yourself from turning it up, you literally let it flow all the way through you and allowed your body to receive the energy? How much different would your choices actually be? What else could actually be possible for, to you if you allowed yourself to receive judgment? So everywhere you're making judgment real and true and everywhere you're making judgment about you when it has nothing to do with you and everything to do with the other person, we just ran and created all time for good for you. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pod, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. The other thing to you guys that's really, um, that's really cute and funny is that um, when we're looking at judgment, in order for there to be like something, so I was thinking of it like, I'm not a boxer, but I understand the, the idea of shadow boxing. So it's like, when you look at, um, when you look at someone that's like going to fight, right? So the only way they can actually make an impact is if there's something hard for them to bump up against, against right? So like when that unstoppable force meets the immovable object, like that's when there's an impact. But what's happening is if you actually lower your walls and barriers and you allow them to thrust that judgment, they're constantly punching at nothing. They're punching it. They're shadow boxing essentially. And so what happens is like they either run out of steam, which happens, that, that is what happens on eventually. It is what happens is that they run out of steam. And then also like, there's nothing like you have no wall, you have no barrier up against it. You don't have to align and agree and you don't have to resist or react to whatever the judgment is. So that willingness to actually lower your walls and barriers actually puts you into something called interesting point of view. And from that interest, that space of interesting point of view, literally anything is possible because everything just becomes an interesting point of view. And that's the other thing too, that's really, um, we live in a world that is very much like black and white, right and wrong. Like this reality is so much about definitions that it's like the only way that a judgment can ping or can make an impact is if you have a definition that that judgment either can align and agree with or resist and react to. So when you're willing to actually get out of judgment of yourself, which also means, means getting out of definition of yourself, then that's actually where the, the infiniteness of your being can show up and create the magic that we're actually all here to create. So everything that doesn't allow you to know, be perceive and receive that. And everywhere you're like, what the heck do Paula just say? I don't even know. Can you just try and create that please? Right, wrong, good, right, bad, right. pod, pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Cool. So when we talk about definitions, it is something as simple as like, I am a woman, I am a man, I am a wife, I am a husband, I am a mother, I am a father, I am a daughter, I am a son. Like all of these things are different definitions. And what happens is, or even when you look at, you know, whatever your occupation is, or um, like your age or your sexual preferences or what, like whatever that is, like those are all definitions. And it doesn't mean that you can't choose one because it's like, maybe that works for you and that's really fun. But what we're actually inviting you to look at is the places and spaces where those definitions actually don't work for you. And that's actually what's stopping you because you have that definition, which means that there can be a judgment attached to it, which means that you're constantly in polarity and you're fighting you. So you are constantly fighting you and everywhere you're constantly fighting you because you're not willing to let go of your definitions of you. Will you just try and create that? Right, wrong, good and bad, pod and pock, all nine, short, boys and beyond. I have, um, there's some clearings here that actually, let me just pull them up really quick. The um, definition clearings I think could be really cool to just like run. Um, 
Okay, so I'm gonna give you, we're gonna do a clearing. Um, so you're gonna insert your name here. Oh, I love that I was saying. And then we can take a couple questions if you have it. So what definitions of Paula am I using to create the limitations of me I am choosing? Okay, so if your name is Ashley, you're gonna say Ashley. If your name is Victor, you're gonna say Victor. If your name is Tori, you're gonna say Tori. Okay, so what definitions of Paula am I using to create the limitations of me am I choosing? Everything that is, we've strained and created. Right, wrong, good and bad, pod and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. What definitions of Paula am I using to create the limitations of me I am choosing? Everything that is, we've strained and created. Right, wrong, good and bad, pod and pock, <laughs> all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. What definitions of Paula am I using to create the limitations of Paula am I choosing? Everything that is, we're just trying to create it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pod and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. How many definitions are you using to create the definable, limited you you are choosing? Sorry, Los Angeles traffic. Everything that is, we're just trying to create it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pod and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. How many definitions of you are you using to create the definable limited you you are choosing? Everything that is, we just try and create it. Right now, right now, pod, 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 nine shorts, boys and beyond. Okay. How many definitions of you are you using to try to create the right, good, perfect life that you hate are you choosing? <laughs> Everything that is, we just try and create it. Right now, I'm good and bad, pod and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. Oh, you guys, that was so I loved good. everyone's faces. Everyone got like, what? Oh. oh. That was so good. Wait, that's what I'm choosing? Um, I know. How many definitions of you are you using to try to create the right, good, perfect life that you hate are you choosing? Everything that is, we just try and create it. Right now, I'm good and bad, pod and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. I love it. So for those of you that, um, I know Ashley already said this, just a reminder. So we're running something called the clearing statement. So um, if you don't know what it is, you can go to theclearingstatement.com. I know there's people on here that have no clue what the clearing statement is or even access mm -hmm. consciousness. So thank you still for choosing. Um, so essentially, and I'm going to give you the like super baby condensed version, but essentially what's happening is we ask that question and you know, you perceive that like, Ugh, or like some people start laughing or like, so essentially that's an energy. You're perceiving an energy there. So what the clearing statement does is it's like a magic wand. We ask a question that energy comes up and the magic wand that is the clearing statement kind of takes it and like swoops away that initial layer. So it's like, if you, the being, and we'll just call you a magical little unicorn pony, right? So if your layer, if you are sitting underneath layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of like the shit, that is the projections, the expectations, the judgments, the rejections, the conclusions, the decisions, like all of those things that are thrust upon you from like a very, very young age of like, you know, as simple as like, like be a good girl, you know, clean your plate, be kind, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Like all of these constant things that were, are, are projected us our whole lives. So we sit underneath this layer of, and layer and layer and layer of like all of this shit right so you can't ever get to the actually to the pony that is you so the purpose of the clearing statement is to actually bring up that energy and as we continue to ask questions as we continue to clear as we continue to lower our walls and barriers and as we begin to choose more those layers clear and those layers clear and eventually you get to you and from that space of you you can choose and create and be and do and have and receive anything so everything Amen. doesn't allow <laughs> Cool. So everything doesn't allow you to know, be, perceive, and receive that. Will you destroy it and create it? Right, wrong, good and bad, pod and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And you guys, this is, we're in like a really dynamic time where everybody's stuff is coming up because there's such a, like, you're in, there's nowhere to run more often than not, right? Like, so you're constantly faced with like your relationships with other people, your relationships with you, the things that you've been hiding from yourselves, like it's getting more and more difficult to avoid them. <laughs> And so yeah. that's the time when you actually 
what, when we want to contract and we want to, we're perceiving the judgments of everybody else and we're, we're perceiving everyone else's crunchiness, like we want to contract, but that's actually the time that you need to actually expand out. You need to ask questions. You need to pock and pod. That's the other thing we're saying, right? Right, blue, bad, pop, pod, all men towards boys and beyond. So you can just say pock and pod. So like that now more than ever is the time for us to actually start asking these questions and using these tools because we are living in a world that is shrouded in judgment and conclusion and a lack of possibility. And you, my friends, yeah. are the seekers. Like we are the choosers. We are the magicians. We are the creators of a reality beyond this reality. Absolutely. So everything doesn't allow you to acknowledge you as the magician, the creator, the mage of a reality beyond this reality. Can you just try and create that? Will right you and start and that? <laughs> right now I'm getting bad pod and pock all nine shorts, boys and beyond. That's the other thing. You have total choice. You don't actually have to change any of this. You don't want to. Paula and I yeah. are just inviting you guys to a different possibility. And we've both been there. And thank you so much, Kathy, for your vulnerability, saying that you're your worst critic and you always, always sabotage yourself. It's like, I mean, how many of you make yourself wrong and constantly judge yourself for what you choose and don't choose? It's like, we literally are our worst critic. We are far worse than anyone else judging us. And we make our judgments of us way more real and true than anyone else's judgments of us. So I have a really funny story, like, which some of you might, may have already, may already know, like a week ago, I haven't done many Facebook lives. Like Paula and I have done some together and, you know, I haven't gone live by myself. So I went to go live by myself about a week ago to promote my upcoming money class tomorrow. And um, I was trying to do it from this reality. I was trying to do it from, oh, I better know exactly what I'm saying. I better really like have a script and then I'll go live. And so I go live and I'm like, oh, what do I talk about? I'll start reading a book. So I start reading <laughs> one of the money books and I was like, literally about a minute and a half in, I looked up and it was like three people watching. And I'm like, three people are watching. What are they going to think of me? And then literally halfway through the conversation, I pressed the finish button with no explanation. All of a sudden I was talking and then my live just finished one and a half minutes in. And I was like, I sat there and I was like, I can't believe I just did that. And then I was like, okay. And I started going into the wrongness of me and judging me. And I went, what if I didn't have to make that wrong? What if I could actually just laugh about that? Like, because it's the wrongness and the judgment that you have of yourself that will stick you. So in that moment, I had two choices. I could have very easily let that moment create something within me that I never wanted to do a live again or never wanted to do a call online again. So I could choose that or I could choose to show up as me, to turn it up and go, well, you know what? cool who cares if anyone judges me who cares if no one likes what I'm saying who cares if they think I'm a crap facilitator what does that even mean like that actually has nothing to do with me so I'm like what do I desire to create in the world okay I desire to create more consciousness I desire to create so much consciousness that people have total choice and know that they have everything possible and everything available to them so I made the second choice I was like you know what stuff it I'm just going to be me and I'm going to go live again. I mean, it took me a few days. Let me, let me be honest, but I went live again and it was great, but it's like, how many of you are choosing choice one and stopping yourself from turning it up and showing up as you rather than choosing choice two, that's always available to you and just literally potting and pocking everywhere you believe that people will judge you for it. Because like I said, it's got nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. If someone's actually resisting and reacting or judging you for something you've chosen or not chosen or done or not done, it's actually because they're either doing it themselves or they've been and done it before in other lifetimes or potentially this lifetime. So everything that brings up and everywhere using everyone else's judgments to limit you and your judgments to limit you, limit you and everywhere you're not willing to choose choice two and truly turn it up, we just drain and create it all the time. Like a billion. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pod, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Is there, is there, okay, can someone on here, um, can you raise your hand if you've ever been judged? Keep it up. So raise your hand if you've ever been judged or you perceive judgment, okay? So keep your hand up if you died <laughs> receiving the judgment. Anybody die? Nope, we're all, oh. 
what? What's that? We all received judgment and we didn't die? Can you? Okay. So are, are their fates worse, worse than being judged? <laughs> cool. So everything doesn't allow you to laugh at that or no be perceived to receive it. Will you destroy it and create it? Right and wrong, good and bad, pocket pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. But Paula, judgment is the worst thing ever. Judgment kills. Yeah, that's true. And also, what if in the face of judgment, you turned it up? Because it's not going to kill you. In fact, Gary Douglas, who's the founder of Access Consciousness, he says that for every judgment you're willing to receive, you'll make ten thousand. You'll make five thousand dollars that year. So he's like, he's like, you're you will make more money when you're willing to have, lower your walls and barriers and receive judgment. And for every judgment that you resist, you lose ten thousand dollars. And here's how it works: if I chose choice one and didn't choose to create more online classes and didn't choose to show up again ever as me because I was worried about judgment. Guess what? I wouldn't have made any money. I actually would have lost money and not actually made any more on my business. I would have let that to forever stop me from actually choosing. So that's how it actually works. If you're willing to receive judgment and go beyond that, like I was, and I was like, I'm still going to do all these calls, even though this one's free, I'm doing other ones. But that's when you, that's when you make $5,000 more that year. And if you're not willing to receive judgment, you lose 10,000. And that's the thing. If you're not willing to receive it and you let it stop you, you'll, you'll lose $10,000. So everything that brings up <laughs> and everywhere you're judging you for not actually receiving judgment up until this point in time, we just ran uncreated all times a good yeah. Right and wrong, good and bad, pocket pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Yeah. And you guys, the other thing too, is like, remember that as we talked about judgment it's like, yeah. Okay. So judgment, like, did you die? No, you didn't. Like lawyer walls and barriers make more money in the face of judgment but at the it's just like ashley said in the beginning like it's all a lie anyway so it's like people are creating these like magical i'm not even gonna say magical these like my mythical worlds where like it's not even real and we're buying into it as real and we're aligning and agreeing and we're living our life in a way that we believe is going to keep us from constantly avoiding judgment newsflash you, people will still judge you and it's like for what like you're benfold staple and mutilating yourself for what like what if you being you is actually a gift can actually change the world and and can invite other people to do the same Everywhere you're not willing to be, no perceive and receive the gift, the brilliance, the magic, the greatness, the ease, the joy, and the possibility you truly be, we just ran on cradle of that time to get billion. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pod, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. you got to get this, guys. You are such a gift just being you just showing up as you whether you finish a live halfway through talking whether you do an online class and you're like wow that wasn't as good as it could be but hell whatever i was being me it's like when you show up as you really like you are unstoppable like absolutely unstoppable like no one can actually ever stop you but you anyway like is it actually the judgment that stops you or is it your unwillingness to receive the judgment that stops you it's the latter, right? So it's like, what if you could get that no one can stop you but you? Well, what stops what stops us too is like being willing, like aligning and agreeing and buying it as real and true. Yeah. Like, so that's, you know, when you guys look at that, I know we just had a question in the chat. Um, can any definitions of you create greater? P.S. If I could finally stop judging myself and my creations, I know I would be unstoppable, but apparently judging myself is more valuable. So there's a couple of questions there. Um, and what I will say is, so the first thing is like any like definition by definition alone is a limitation. So anyway, any, anywhere you're like, I am this, like you can only, so whatever it is, like, I, I, I mean, I'm like, give me a definition. 
Somebody give me a definition. Like, do you, you want to come off? Do you want to come off live, honey? And ask. And yeah, ask so you a question like, if you want. So let me. Yeah. Um. So so basically, like, anytime you're like, okay, how about here we go? So, say you're at a buffet, right? And you're like, I only eat chicken. That's all I eat. I don't eat vegetables. I don't. I'm a chickenitarian. <laughs> Sorry, translators. <laughs> Okay, so I only eat chicken, but you go to this buffet and there's beef and there's chicken and there's pork and there's fish and there's delicious leafy greens and there's fruits and there's chocolate desserts and there's vanilla desserts, but you've decided because you've defined yourself as only a chickenitarian. It's a thing, go with it. Like you only eat chicken. So you've now cut yourself off. There is a, a literal smorgasbord of possibilities in front of you. And you've decided because I only eat chicken, I'm going to just ignore any other possibility, any flavor, any texture, any other bit of deliciousness. I'm not, I can't even look at it because I've defined myself as someone who only eats chicken. Because like, that's the thing. Any definition is a limitation, right? Anything you define yourself as is a limitation. As an infinite being, there are infinite possibilities available. I mean, I don't even, there's not a definition for infinite, right? Like it's endless. So anything is actually available to you. So if you're going to define yourself as a chicketarian or a, so I didn't even say that right. I was like, that's such a hard word to say. <laughs> or, or I think a chicketarian is someone that only likes chicks. I, I can just see someone in a chick costume just like you know just, I'm not sure that's the first thing I see like red rooster in Australia anyway so any anything you define yourself of as will always limit you so as an infinite being like the the brilliance of you is that you can actually live in 10 second increments like you get to choose something different every 10 seconds I mean every one second if you desire so if you define yourself as something, it's like you won't give yourself permission to change your mind every 10 seconds. Like, can I tell you, Paula and I have created how many foundation classes? Like maybe two, three that haven't gone ahead. So we've created a foundation class. Most of them were live. And then all of a sudden it just didn't feel light anymore. So instead of defining ourselves as, oh, well, we have to do a foundation class because we've told everyone we will. We're like, no, we get total choice. Does it actually feel light or heavy to go ahead with the foundation? It feels heavy. Okay, well, that's not going to create the future I know is actually possible. So cool. What if we just didn't judge ourselves? And what if we didn't actually choose to do the foundation? And it's even like this call. We were like, cool. If we defined ourselves as we're only going to facilitate this call and we only do free calls to English speakers, we wouldn't have all these beautiful Portuguese and Spanish speakers on either. So all the definitions you have of you, stopping you from creating the life, the living, the money, the abundance, the ease, and the joy that you truly deserve, we destroy and create it all times a gazillion. Yes. Right and wrong, getting bad, pocket pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. Sorry, I might have to close my window in just a second. They're like, the, the gardeners are here. Um, but the other thing too about that is like, and to go back to the question that was asked, is that it's not that the definition is wrong. If the definition is working for you, then by all means, like choose it. It's when you start bumping up against those things where you're asking for more and you're asking for greater and it's not showing up. And that's where you, you might maybe want to start looking at the definitions. Hold on, I'm going to put you in Awesome. So does anyone have any questions either? Like I know we've been kind of like speaking at you for a while. As I said, if anyone has any questions about that, I know some of you are new to access. Please feel free to come off mute and ask us anything. We totally hear for you. It's your call. And you don't have to ask something. <laughs> Sarah? I just heard you grunt. I didn't know. Hi. I didn't realize that my voice was that I've literally, I just woke up. I was like, Oh my God, I'm in time to catch the zoom. This is amazing. Oh, amazing. Thank you, you for creating for us. I don't, I was pondering in thought because obviously we had a conversation the other day about, um, 
where we were limiting ourselves, yeah. where I was choosing to limit myself and what I thought was possible at this time. Yeah. And so I was just seeing what came up in my waking up phase, if there was anything I could contribute. Yeah, of course. Well, you being here is a contribution, so thank you for choosing. Yeah. Thank you so and much for creating. It's like, guys, as well, it's like, are you actually willing to acknowledge the choices that you have made so far? Like, what if you could actually have gratitude for what you have chosen? Where you have chosen to step into the greatness of you, where you have chosen to turn it up, instead of going into the judgment of all the things you haven't chosen yet? Because judgment destroys, period. So if you're not willing to have gratitude for what you've chosen already, then nothing greater can show up. So everything that doesn't allow you to have total gratitude for you and the choices you've made this far and all the places you have already turned it up that you haven't even acknowledged yet, we just ran and created all times a gazillion. Right, yes. wrong, good and bad, park and pod, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. I love that. It's interesting. So I was just um, on like a radio interview thing a couple days ago and one of the things that they were talking about is they weren't saying judgment but they were like what was something that like used to be it was like what the question was what was something that you used to be like ashamed of or um that people told you to basically turn down that now is like something that you're proud of and um I talked about how and I think this is actually like so much of what you just tapped into here that so when I was younger um all like every single report card that came back was Paula is so bright like she's clearly very intelligent and she talks too much like I cannot tell you <laughs> I can't tell you how many report cards like it, it was ev like every parent teacher conference like every written note like I would get in trouble for talking too much and I wasn't always something maybe sometimes I was being disruptive but I was like often like helping my classmates with their homework or like you know creating with the the kids that were around me and um one of the things that I said to on this interview is I was like the the irony here is that I literally now and like as a facilitator that's one of my businesses but I also travel all over the world as a hairdresser um and connect with other hairdressers as well I work behind a chair in a salon like every single business that I have that makes me money requires me to be able to talk to people. And it's like, if I had gone and looked at, like, if I had made myself wrong for all of those years where people told me I talk too much, like what, wh where would I be? Like, can I not go back and look at and have gratitude now for all of those choices that could have been around us? Cause there were times where it was devastating. I actually had a, <laughs> I had a guy, this happened like a year or two ago, I had a guy like basically break up with me because he told me that I talk too much, specifically during sex, but it's fine. So like, that's the thing though, is it's like, really, I'm like, if I had like bought that judgment as real and not just as a point of view, then like, where would I be? I would like mute, like what? No, like that's not even fun. So it's like, when you start to look at all these places where we're like turning it down and it's like, for what? why like you turning it up you showing up you being you you speaking out in whatever ways is appropriate or fun or works for you and and it's not saying that everyone has to be like loud mouth and outspoken right it's not saying that that like the way i roll is the way that you have to roll it's not what no anyone's saying it's like you be you and you but be you boo right so you be you you do you and you do what works for you and you choose what works for you and when you're doing that from a true space of being with like an acknowledgement of you and a gratitude for you, that's when the magic shows up. That's when the creations that are even bigger, even better, even greater, even more of a contribution than you can even ever, ever dream of start to show up. Yeah, it's, it's so Everything true. Everything doesn't allow you to receive, receive yeah. and that leads straight to create it. Right now, right, good now, bad good bad 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 so it's me up. cool. Yeah, Kathy, like that's so the thing is, like, you be joy when you're being you, like, joy is our natural state, and that's like just like Ashley said, like, that is our birthright. Like, as infinite beings, like, if we are not joyful, then look at the definitions, look at the judgments, look at the conclusions, 
and and, and then, for me like I'm this sorry you go I was just gonna say like that's where you really want to look at one one of my favorite questions there is like okay interesting point of view I have that point of view it's like when that comes up and it's like oh Paula like you probably shouldn't talk too much it makes people uncomfortable like well interesting point of view I have that point of view interesting point of view they have that point of view interesting point of view anybody has that point of view interesting point of view I have that point of view interesting point of view they have that point of view interesting point of view anybody has that point of view and then cock and pod so that's like that's the thing is it's all just a point of view like judgment is a lie and anything that does not bring you to joy which is your natural state it's not true for you it's just an interesting point of view and that's so i have another tool there but let's let's play with that and then ashley let's let's go to you girl what you got oh thanks <laughs> I was just going to say that for me, when I'm not experiencing joy, because now I know that joy is my natural state. Joy is our natural state. So when I'm not experiencing joy, I'm like, okay, I know that I'm in someone else's reality or I've taken on board someone else's thoughts, feelings, emotions that actually are not mine and solidified them in my body. So when I'm experiencing anything other than joy, I'm like, okay, whose reality am I in? right now who does this belong to because i know that if i'm not being joyful and if you're not being joyful you're not being you you're in someone else's reality you're being the psychic spongebob that you always are and you're literally living in someone else's reality and particularly with what's going on in the world right now with the coronavirus like lately i've <laughs> My partner, oh God, I feel so sorry for him. He must be going bonkers because every morning he's like, what would you like to do today? And I'm like, I'm not really sure. I don't know what to do. And then I'm like, wait a second. I was like, I usually never have a problem with that, like with knowing what I'd like to do or not like to do. And then I was like, wait, like, who am I being right now? Like, whose reality am I in? And then I just think about all the millions and billions of people around the world that are in lockdown that are not leaving the house that have no idea what to do with themselves. And I'm like, I'm just picking up on all of their stuff. So then when I'm like, okay, return all of that to sender as Ashley, what would I like to choose today? And then that's where you get to the space of you. That's when you're truly being you choosing and functioning from you. So everything that doesn't allow you to be, know, perceive and receive, what's yours and the infinite joy that's actually available to you will you destroy and uncreate it all the time to get them in right and wrong good and bad pock and pot all nine shorts boys and beyonds ashley you're so brilliant thank you so grateful so for you, you. <laughs> um yeah and that's you know that is that was actually the next tool i was going to talk about is who does it belong to and that's where <clears throat> um it's funny because a few so we um bye monica thank you um so about, I think like three or four days ago, it might've been longer now, um, they extended the quarantine um, order in Los Angeles. So I live in Los Angeles, California. They extended the quarantine order um, for another month. So until May 15th. And it was so interesting. So I was, I was work, like working away on meetings or something like that. And I could perceive this like rush of like anxiety and just like oh like just total yuck and contraction and really like crunchiness and I still was you know I was on my meeting so I was doing something else and I was just like wow that's actually really interesting so then I went a full hour later I am on my computer and I see this um news news like broadcast come up that says like one hour ago the mayor you know released a statement saying that they were going to extend the um quarantine order for another 50, or another 30 days um, and then, so then I had the exact same, like, so that same kind of, I'm going to say emotion that I was perceiving an hour before, like intensified so dynamically. And it was like, I now, and because I have the tool, who does this belong to? Like I was instantaneously so aware of the anxiety, the depression, the like, what the hell am I going to do? Like, I don't have money. What am I going to do for food? Like what I just, I could perceive all of that come up that was in the world for everybody. And that's the world that we've been constantly staying, been living in, right? For the past, like, at least four weeks, some of us longer, maybe some of us shorter, but it's like, 
when you look at that, it's like when you use tools like who does it belong to, you can actually get to that space, go to that expansion exercise that we did before where it's like you expand, expand out, you get to the space of you and you acknowledge that if your natural state is joy, Okay, so your natural state is joy, which means that when you're perceiving that anxiety, when you're perceiving the depression, like we have an, and we have a tendency, sorry, Victoria and Diana, I realized I was just talking so fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> those are our, tra I, know, I saw smoke coming out of Victoria's ears. We have <laughs> translators. <laughs> Cool. So when, when you, so we often go to, I feel sad, I feel depressed, I feel whatever it is, anxious. Okay. And it's like, when you actually understand and you get that your natural state is joy, the, the feeling is actually the lower harmonic. Okay. So whereas the perceiving is actually what is available to an infinite being. So do you feel sad or do you perceive sadness? Do you feel depressed or do you perceive depression? Do you feel anxious or do you perceive anxiety? Do you see the difference there? Can you perceive the solidity of one? Whereas the other one is like, okay, cool. So who does this belong to? It's, is this mine is another question I'll ask. Like, is this mine? My natural state is joy, okay. Is this joy? No. Okay, it's not mine. So then return to sender with consciousness attached. And like this tool is like layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. Like the who does this belong to tool is one of the most dynamic tools in all of access consciousness. And one that has like thousands of layers under it. Like I did a session with a lady maybe a week ago and she was talking about her desire to go to the gym. So in access, we talk about light and heavy. So what feels light for you, what feels expansive to you is actually your truth. What feels heavy or contractive is a lie. So she was saying when she goes to the gym every morning, she's like, I, re I feel really heavy when I wake up to go to the gym. But when I go to the gym and I exercise, after that, I feel really light. So what does that mean? Do I follow what feels light or follow what feels heavy? And I'm like, well, first, it's just a choice. But how much of that heaviness you perceive in the morning when you wake up to go to the gym is everybody else's that don't decide to go to the gym in the morning? Because how many people do you know that go to the gym because people have told them they have to go to the gym? People have told them they have to exercise, otherwise they're gonna die from a heart attack early. People have told them all this stuff that they've made real and true, that they've chosen to do, that doesn't necessarily feel good for them, their body doesn't actually desire to go to the gym. So I said to her, how much of that heaviness is even yours? And she went, oh, none of it's mine. And it's like, what? Like, this is what we do. It's like we live our lives through the thoughts, feelings, emotions, and points of view that we perceive from everyone else outside of us thinking that they're ours. And when I had you know, anxiety and depression, like I told you at the start of the call for literally as long as I can remember up until a year and a half ago, so until I was like 27 or something, I just realized that I was a psychic SpongeBob, but no one had ever told me that. No one had ever told me that I was an infinite being and that joy, that ease, that magic and that possibilities were my natural state, just as you guys are. So it's like, how many lies are you actually buying from other people that aren't real and true for you. So everything, all of that is, we destroy and uncreate it all times a gazillion. Yeah, right and wrong, good and bad, pocket and pot, all nine shorts, boys and girls. I love that so much, Ashley. And I, it's funny because, um, so I, um, I experienced like for most of my like adolescence and into my early adulthood. So like up until six months ago. Cause I'm still a young adult. So Wait a it's second. like, you're 25. I'm 18. I, I, I right, think I got my totally. age right before. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. But it's like, so for most of my life, I experienced really se severe depression. Like I was on medication for it and it wasn't until, so I lived away from my family for like, since I was in, since I was 18. And, um, so I think my last, I don't know, I was in my early twenties, um, when I was like, came off of the depression medication, but 
I had been on it for a few years before um, I was like talking to my mom about it. And she knew that like I was going through these massive depressive, depress easy for me to say. I was going through these massive depressive episodes where I couldn't get out of bed for weeks and then eventually was on medication. So she knew all of this for years. And then finally, like, I think two weeks after I was like, I'm done, I'm not going to take this medication anymore. It doesn't work for me. She was like, well, you know, um, actually your grandma and I both also were taking medication for depression for most of our lives. And she didn't think to tell me <laughs> like, so for my entire life, I was surrounded by people that were experiencing severe depression, medicated for it. My mom was bipolar as well, diagnosed bipolar. So it's like, I was constantly surrounded by people that had these mental health issues. I had no idea. And it wasn't until after I had like suffered for so many years that I, I finally realized that I was surrounded by people. And then after that, I learned the tool, who does it belong to? And it eventually like all trailed back. So it's like all of, if we look back in our lives, like, can we look back at all the places and spaces where we judged ourselves as depressed, as sad, as anxious, as whatever, too fat, wrong. too skinny, too tall, too short. Yeah. Wrong, wrong, wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, right? wrong, wrong. So can you actually look back at that? And you guys like, what if none of that is yours. And I'm actually going to tell you, sorry, I don't tell people things very often. I don't like to disempower in general, but it's like, none of that is yours. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. And you've never been wrong, you're wrong. and you're still not wrong. Yep. You are never wrong. You'll never be wrong. Sorry. Hate to break it to you. You're brilliant and you're infinite and you're magic and you're great and you're a gift to the world. So everything doesn't lie to know. We perceive and receive that. We just train and create it. Right now I'm getting mad putting Poco and I in shorts, boys and beyond. Um, so there is, Jade, Jade says, annoying. That's my thing. I'm annoying. Um, yes, there are tools available. Would that be any? Yeah, and it totally is. That's, again, is, is that yours? would be my question. Like, is that your point of view? Or is there somewhere, someone in your life that you were picking up on that was either person, like, and here's, here's the thing, is that how many people have you been around that have actually judged themselves as annoying and you actually were perceiving their judgment of themselves, but because you didn't have the tool, who does it belong to, you actually misidentifying and misapplying that you are annoying. Does that make sense? So it's like, if you're psychic, I love that you say psychic SpongeBob Ashley. So it's like, if you're psychic and you're picking up on the thoughts, 99.999% of your thoughts, feelings, and emotions don't actually belong to you. You're just really fucking aware. You have a capacity if, that no one's ever told you about. Sorry and if you're smiling, it, it means it's light for you. Ashley talked about light and heavy. If you're smiling or laughing, it's true for you. <laughs> okay, so 99.999% of your thoughts, feelings, and emotions don't actually belong to you. You're actually picking up on the thoughts, feelings, and emotions of everyone else around you who more often than not also do not have these tools. Okay, so is it yours? Is the I am annoying actually yours or are you perceiving that someone else? Is it in someone else's world? Cool. So everything that is in a light and know, be perceived and receive that with total clarity and ease. We just try and create it. Right now, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Jade, do you want to come on? And like, is there more or? Boy, this is a good, this is good. This is. <laughs> Well, I, okay, so I love that you talked about how you talk too much, because I'm like, I, I don't think this is a negative thing, like, I want, like, I'm needy, like, I need attention, attention, like, other people's attention gives me energy, um, and I, 
I define that as an extrovert because I just like other people's energy. Other people's energy gives me energy. But when I try to return it, it's too much. So I'm like too much. <clears throat> cool. Um, okay, so this is, we're gonna talk more about this. Ashley and I actually have a foundation class coming up, um, which we'll talk more about this, but um, can you say, uh, what did you say? I'm just too much. I'm too much. Can you say I'm too much three times? I'm too much. I'm too much. I'm too much. Okay, so all the shiku implants and explants creating that and holding it in place, will you destroy and uncreate it? Right now, yes or no? You don't have to know what I'm saying. It's okay. Cool. <laughs> I don't. So, I would like to. So, so, yeah. So that's the thing is like, but it's like, okay, so as an infinite being, like, can you ever be too much? No. Yes. No. Yeah. No. Okay, yeah. cool. So oh. is, is that actually, is that a reflection of you or is it actually an indication of how much people are willing to receive? Yeah. How much people are willing to receive. Cool. So what if you asked, Hey, can this person receive all of me right now? How much can this person receive? Ugh. How much of this, how much can this person receive? Yeah. Cause that's, that's the thing where we, we often like, we're like, I'm this big bundle of joy. And it's like, yeah, we're only too much for the people that can't receive, that aren't willing to receive, that have walls and barriers up to it. And that's fine. Like, what if just like, we're not wrong. They're not wrong either. It's just a choice right. that they're making. So when you look at that and it's like, it's actually when you try to give someone more than they're, they can, they, they can receive, it's actually an unkindness. So we're often we're often entrained to believe that I'm going to give and give and give and keep giving more and keep giving more and keep giving more and keep giving more because I can see that this person has, you can perceive an energy of lack in their world, but what if that energy of lack works for them? And you don't have to judge it, but you can acknowledge it and say, okay, cool. So I get that this person can receive this much, so I'm not going to give them this much because they can only receive this much. And then I'm gonna wait for them to ask for more. And I might make them ask for more a few times before I'm actually willing to give it, not from a place of resistance, but from a space of, do they actually desire more? And then I'm gonna give it to them. And that's where like, when you speak to what you're, where you're saying like, I, I love, Playing with other people's energy that's called contribution so when you're gifting to someone and then their receiving of that gift actually gifts to you and it's this constant cycle and we're playing with each other and we're having fun just like we are all on this call right now like that's that's contribution so it's not a wrongness that's actually the way the earth works right the sun shines on the earth and then doesn't send it a bill every month saying hey this is how much i lit you up pay me <laughs> Right? That's not what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining that happening now. I'm like, where's the mailbox? Yeah. <laughs> like, where, where's my money? <laughs> Where do they actually right? transfer so, it to? So, but do you see, you guys, and all of you, this is, this is where these judgments and these lies stick us. Bye, Tori. Can I just add something there? Yeah. Yeah. Can I, look, can I just finish this? Yeah. So, like, this is though you guys like the insanity that we're entrained to, right? Like I'm too much. I'm more than someone's willing to receive. And so they make me wrong. So then I must be wrong. So then I'm going to turn down and not be all of me and not, I'm going to hide some of my magic and only let a little bit of my magic show because one person one time in the years that I've ever lived upon this earth and the years of all the lifetimes, the trillions of years of lifetime, one person told me that I was too much. Do you get, like, do we see the insanity here? So it's like everywhere that we've bought into the insanity of I'm too much or what insert whatever your thing is there, will you now destroy and create that? Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pod, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. Well, I, 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 I don't know. Pot and 
No, it's okay. How long are we going? Ninety minutes? Is that what we? Oh, I don't know. It's been about an hour now, so whatever. I kind of. Energy. I kind of yeah. Kathy's is never good enough. Same thing, Kathy. Talking about that shit. Let it go. Make yeah. yours, girl. That's yeah. right. Talk to pod. Um, I, I, I think, I, yeah. You might have another call. Um, Jade, I was just going to add to that too quickly. What happens when um, you give someone more than they can receive, which we all do it because we all desire to be a contribution to everyone. What happens is when we do that, they have to judge us, reject us, and then separate from us when we actually give them more than they can handle. So if they have to judge you, how much of that judgment, like Paula said, of them judging you for being too much and giving too much, are you then aware of thinking that you're then too much when it had nothing to do with you in the first place? So everything that brings up and everything that doesn't allow you to be, you know, perceive and receive, that none of that was yours in the first place, we just ran and created all times a gazillion. Right, no, I'm good and bad, pot and poke, all names short, boys and beyonds. And what energy, space, consciousness, choice, magic, miracles, mysteries and possibilities can you and your body be to turn up your capacities, your ease, your joy, your magic, your fun, your abundance, your money, your life, your living for all eternity. <laughs> so everything that doesn't allow that, we just ran and created all times a gazillion. Right, no, I'm good and bad, pot and poke, all names short, boys and beyonds. Shorts, boys and beyonds. I love that yeah cool and you guys it's like honestly even even if you can choose so like acknowledge that uh, now acknowledge your choice to show up now show up here oh thanks kathy she says tingly <laughs> so acknowledge that your choice to show up here is a choice to turn it up and it never shows up the way you think it's going to. And every time you choose to show up as you and lower your walls and barriers and expand out and be the magic that you be, you change the world. Okay, so what if, just like we said at the very beginning, like you never turned down, you never turned off, never made yourself smaller for anyone or anything ever again so that like everywhere that you would just went into a beyond of like what's what's gonna happen if i don't turn down will you just try to create that right and wrong getting bad pocket pot all nine shorts boys beyonds ashley do you have anything no, I was just going to say, what if the worst that can happen when you turn it up is that your magic actually shows up, the ease that you be starts to show up and the things that you've always asked for and always known was possible start actually showing up. What if that's actually the worst that can happen? Or what if the worst that can happen actually is that people judge you? Is that even real and true? Judgment is not real. Again, what if you could just use that energy to flow through you and what if you never let anyone or anything stop you ever again from choosing anything greater? Not even if you mess it all up from your point of view. Not even if you've made mistakes in the past. Not even if you've tried that thing so many times and it never worked. What if you could just choose again and again and again and again and truly be willing to live in 10 seconds, 10 seconds and as the infinite being, you truly be. So now the time to actually turn it up. Woohoo! I love it. Cool. Do you guys have any other questions? Any anything else? Hells yes, Sarah said. I love it. Amazing. <laughs> so good. Thank you guys so much. I, f I like. I feel like I I find myself on that one. Yeah, no, but I'm my brain. I'm like. <laughs> like all right i love it thank you guys cool. so much for being here we are so grateful for you choosing something greater here, and it's like uh so someone in spanish just saying like oh my god i love the happiness oh, and all this energy of you guys this is amazing so just wanted to say that <laughs> yay uh, gracias yeah <laughs> I couldn't remember what thank you was in Spanish. <laughs> I'm terrible. Gracias. 
It's like that. Obrigado. <laughs> Obrigado <laughs> Portuguese, yes. Next well, phrase during will be Spanish and Portuguese lessons. If anyone's on. <laughs> I personally, every time I try and do accents, sound Indian. I must have lived in India for a number of past lives. But anyway, I I'm happy to do a free call. <laughs> so again, thank you guys so much for being here. Um, if you're not already, follow or add Paula and I on social media. We're always doing something, creating something, and we invite you to play with us. We're doing an online foundation class. If you desire more of this, um, at the end of May, I'll send details out in the follow-up email. Um, you do have to attend an access bars class as a prerequisite. Um, there's some of those going on in the world, otherwise you can purchase them online. But if you'd like any more information, let us know. It's a four day class that basically like this on steroids for four days and just shifts, unlocks and transforms every area of your life. We talk about money, sex, relationships, business, like literally anything you want to bring to the table, we talk about. So, um, and tomorrow morning in almost 25 hours, I'm doing a one-off call called Money Come. So if any of you would like to create more money with ease and clear from stuff sticking you with money, please, I invite you to come and play with me as well. So I'll send the link to you guys in the follow-up email as well as the recording so you can listen to it as many times as you guys would like to. So yes, we have we have lots of things coming up. Um, I have a being you a social media class coming up as well. Um, there's lots of creation. So we'll, um, we'll give you guys access. We'll pop our like our websites in. So if you're interested, we'd love to stay in touch with you. If you guys have any questions, we both do um, one on one sessions as well. So if you have any interest in that, and yeah, thank you so much for choosing to be here. Your your being here and your choosing this is for me personally, and I know for Ashley and I, like I can speak for Ashley, but like we're just so grateful, like so grateful. Um, it's such a contribution and I might get emotional. Um, I just, I, how did I get so lucky to be able to one, find these tools, like to find these tools and then to be able to share them with people all over the world. It's such a gift. So thank you for choosing. I adore you. Thank you for being a gift and being you. Turn it up. Thanks, guys. <laughs> we adore you. Thank Turn you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.